Inside this abandoned warehouse in a location that must remain secret, we're going to do something that we probably shouldn't be doing. But we're going to go for it anyway. Good evening. I'm Mitch Pileggi. You're about to see one of the world's top magicians break his code of silence and reveal some of magic's most closely guarded secrets. This is not a gimmick. You are actually going to find out how these amazing illusions are pulled off. A warning. If you don't want to know how these tricks are done, better switch to another channel right now. We're really not sure why a well-known magician would go on television and expose these deep, dark secrets. After all, he's risking his entire career to do so. That's why in order to protect his identity, you will not hear him speak or even see his face. He will be known only as the masked magician. Tonight, for the first time on television, he will reveal the incredible secret of sawing a woman in half, the secret trick to levitating eight feet off the ground, and the astonishing secret of making a 7,000 pound elephant disappear right before your very eyes. Don't blink. You might miss one of these amazing secrets. You've now entered the warehouse. For his first trick, the masked magician will turn one of his assistants into a tiger. He'll begin by showing you what the illusion is supposed to look like. Then you'll see how it's actually done. It doesn't matter where you see these illusions performed, in a glitzy Vegas show, a big budget television special, or a show like this where we've stripped away the fancy lasers and pyrotechnics. The tricks are all basically the same. The masked magician makes his entrance. It's important to remember that none of the illusions you will see have been achieved through camera tricks. The magician selects an assistant and puts her into the cage. The cage is then covered by a yellow curtain. There's a reason for this. You'll notice that in many of tonight's tricks, curtains or other obstructions are used to hide what's going on behind the scenes. This is when most illusions are actually pulled off. The cage is lifted into the air, making it impossible for anything or anyone to get in or out. All attention is now focused on the cage. Our magician strikes a dramatic pose. And when the curtains are removed, our assistant has been turned into a 500 pound tiger. It seems pretty magical, but obviously there has to be a logical explanation. Okay, let's let the cat out of the bag and show you how the trick is done. Believe it or not, the tiger is actually inside the cage during the entire illusion. To keep him hidden from view, the tiger must be positioned behind a fake wall. Before that can happen, the trainer must first make him as comfortable as possible in his cage. And that means feeding him plenty of raw meat. While one of the trainers distracts the tiger with the meat, another trainer slides the tiger's hind legs against the rear of the cage. Nice kitty. Then the fake wall is gently put into place. The tiger is trained to stand in a confined space, but only for a short period of time. So everything must happen fast. When the actual performance begins, the tiger is already positioned behind the fake wall as the assistant enters the cage. drapes are drawn and with our mini lipstick camera we can see the assistant drop into a secret compartment at the base of the cage while inside she pulls on a cord that releases the tiger into the cage this must be done with perfect timing or the girl and the tiger will end up in the cage at the same time 
From this angle, you can see that the cage is round at the bottom. This is where our assistant is hiding. Take another look. The compartment is extremely shallow. That's why you don't see too many overweight assistants. Our slender assistant must remain perfectly still or the tiger will know that lunch is just inches away. It may seem simple, but that's how you turn a lady into a tiger, no matter who's performing the trick. Now the Chinese lantern trick. In case you're wondering, these are not the mass magician's regular assistants, so that won't help you identify them. First, notice the assistant with the ribbons. She has absolutely nothing to do with the trick. Her rhythmic gymnastics are merely a diversion, but a nice one. Now our magician brings out a light. This is an important part of the trick because the illusion is all about light and shadows. If something were concealed within a secret compartment of the lantern, you'd be able to see its shadow. The idea is to prove to the audience that the lantern is empty. It certainly looks empty. When a magician goes to these lengths to prove his point, you know he's up to something. The light is put in place, and the lantern is closed. He takes us around one more time to show there's nothing hidden behind the lantern. Now it's time for the illusion to begin. Amazingly, a shadow appears from inside the lantern. I told you he was up to something. For effect, our magician puts himself into a deep trance as the shadow magically takes on the form of a woman. Now for the big finish. With a little more showmanship, he transforms the shadow into a real human being. But despite all the artistry, we all know that it was just one big trick. Now we'll show you how it was done. As the lantern is brought out, one of the assistants is already hidden inside. Once the lantern is put into position, the assistant slips out a back panel and hides from view. Our magician uses the light to demonstrate that the lantern is empty, which of course it is because our assistant is still hiding outside. He passes the light between the lantern and the assistant in order to avoid casting a visible shadow. The light is put into place and the front of the lantern is closed. The assistant slips back inside the lantern and waits for her cue. Since she can't see the magician's hands, these choreographed movements are triggered by musical cues. What teamwork. Now let's see what it looks like from inside the lantern. Watch as the assistant gets closer to the front screen, making it seem as if a woman is magically materializing. But we know there's nothing really magical about it. Finally, the assistant pops through the front of the lantern. And our magician has done it again. 
Coming up, the secret of pulling off a death-defying escape. How to make a woman levitate eight feet off the ground. And the secret behind making an elephant vanish into thin air. Now one of magic's bread and butter tricks, levitating a woman. The illusion begins with our assistant taking a few moments to set up the trick. She's trying to prove that the ring is solid. I can tell you right now that it is. More girls, more rings, more dancing. It's all part of the performance to make the trick seem even bigger than it really is. The magician looks for just the right assistant to levitate. Sometimes a magician will select someone from the audience. That person is known as a show and is always in on the trick. What a shock. He chooses the assistant that just happens to be wearing the long flowing gown. Her dress is an important part of the illusion. The magician gazes into her eyes, as if to put her into a deep trance. This is to convince you he's a master hypnotist. The assistant acts as if she's under our magician's hypnotic powers. He puts her on the table and her body appears to go limp. Now the levitation begins. It appears as if she's floating in midair. Obviously this is impossible. He moves his hand underneath her body to show that nothing is supporting her. Now he moves the ring completely around her, proving she isn't being suspended by wires or cables. Remember, as we told you before, the ring is solid. The magician makes it appear as if he's using his hands to guide her down. Slowly, she floats back to her original position and is brought out of her hypnotic trance. Now, for all of you playing at home, here's how it's done. First, in order to levitate, you don't need to be put into a trance. All you need is some heavy machinery and the right evening gown. Look closely. When our assistant's dress is not draped properly, you can see that she's actually lying on top of a three-foot wide platform. The platform is black, so you won't be able to see it against our curtain. It's attached to a hydraulic forklift position behind the curtain. When the magician gives the cue, the magical forklift operator raises and lowers the platform. It's not very magical when you see how it's done. Now what about the solid metal ring? It looks like it passes completely around the assistant. But this is merely an example of sleight of hand. He's only making it appear as if the ring is going all the way around her. From the back, we can see that the bar attached to the forklift prevents the ring from going all the way around the assistant's body. It's the magician's sleight of hand that makes it look as if it really did. And that's the secret behind this classic illusion. Sorry to bring you back down to earth, but this is the only way to levitate. Without a doubt, Houdini was the greatest escape artist who ever lived. Since then, thousands of magicians have repeated his death-defying escapes. You're about to find out how they're done. The magician is put into a straitjacket. This is a real straitjacket, the kind you'd find at any good asylum. It would be virtually impossible for anyone to get out of it.
The straps are securely fastened. Then the magician is loaded into a large box. As he struggles with the straitjacket, the lid is put into place. Now his assistants chain it down and drill it shut. The box is rigged with explosives. He has less than a minute to get out. Again, the obligatory dancing. You'll notice that the assistants are all dressed exactly alike. There's a reason for this. We'll tell you why in a minute. What appears to be a stick of dynamite is attached to the box. The fuse is lit. The tension is mounting. Our magician has only a few seconds left to get out. Even though the audience knows this is only an illusion, it's still pretty convincing. For a second, you actually think it could be real. But you've been fooled. He's not only escaped from the straitjacket in the box, he's now in a different part of the warehouse. Here's how he did it. First for the straitjacket. As the magician is buckled into the straitjacket, he keeps his arms stiff and away from his body, giving him enough slack to eventually escape. Even using this technique, getting out of the straitjacket won't be easy. This part of the trick requires lots of practice. Let's take a look inside the box. As you can see, that extra slack is really coming in handy. Remember, timing is critical. Our magician has less than 60 seconds to remove the straitjacket and exit the box before it's lifted into the air and blown up. Now, remember when we told you about the assistant's outfits? Well, you're about to find out why they're all dressed alike. Inside the box, and now free from the straitjacket, our magician puts on a black jumpsuit that's been hidden inside. It's exactly the same as those worn by his assistants. Then he slips out a trap door at the back of the box. He puts on a matching cap complete with long fake hair. Now he's disguised as one of his assistants. This is where the dynamite comes in. It's not only used to create tension, but also to serve as a diversion, allowing our magician to sneak away. See him crouching down there? He runs up a flight of stairs and gets into position just before the explosion. When the smoke clears, he steps out of his hiding place and onto a nearby catwalk. Bet you didn't know that's how it's done. Next, the secret of sawing a woman in half and how to make a 7,000 pound elephant disappear when magic's biggest secrets are finally revealed. Before we continue, I must tell you that everyone working on this program has been sworn to secrecy. If our magician's identity is revealed, he may be blackballed from the magic community, and it could mean the end of his career. Let's go back inside. We've all seen this next trick. It's called the three cube box. As always, a little performance helps our magician make the illusion seem more spectacular than it really is. One of the assistants steps inside the box and the magician closes and locks the doors. For effect, he checks his blades to prove to the audience that they're solid. Then he hands his assistant a red handkerchief. This is to help sell the illusion.
He feigns resistance, as if the blades are actually cutting into it. But we know that can't be happening because the assistant is still smiling, even though the blades appear to be passing right through her. Now for the second blade. Again, he pretends to be having a tough time pushing it through. She waves in order to show that those hands are really hers. The middle section of the box is slid apart. The hanky's moving. She's still alive. The magician gives you a look at all sides of the box. Then he waves his hand through the missing portion to prove that the trick isn't done with mirrors. It appears that her middle is gone. He pushes the box back into place. One at a time, the blades are removed. He unlocks the door, and our assistant gets out. All in one piece. To show you how this trick is done, we've removed the middle section of the box. You won't believe how simple this one is. First, our assistant steps into the box and our magician locks her inside. Then all she does is turn her body sideways and suck in her stomach. Now notice the blades. The handle is considerably wider than the blade itself, an important fact that is concealed by magicians. This creates the illusion that the blades are the same width as the box and are cutting into the assistant. But we can tell that she's really not in any danger. Now the second blade is inserted into the box. It slides right past her leg. When the magician moves the middle section across, we can see that our assistant's body never moves. Instead, the box moves around her. Take another look in slow motion. Another key to the trick is this vertical strip. Because it's black, it blends in perfectly with the black background, making it appear that the center box has moved further than it really has. Pretty simple, huh? The box is put back together, and the illusion is complete. Here's a trick that you can buy at any magic store. It's known as the linking rings. First, the magician shows you that the rings are solid. Hmm, they sure look solid. Somehow he hooks two of them together. Then he magically separates them. Again, solid, yet together. He does the same trick again, only this time with three rings. He puts them together. Then he takes them apart. Do you know how he did it? Actually, you won't believe how simple it is. While our magician appears to be forcing the rings together, it's really just sleight of hand. See? There's a tiny gap in one of the rings, which he conceals in the palm of his hand. Since the hand is quicker than the eye, we need to watch in slow motion. Bet you didn't see that the first time, did you? Separating the rings simply requires more sleight of hand. Although it looks like the rings are still linked together, they were actually unhooked a moment earlier. Here's the move. And the rings are now apart. And that's the secret of linking rings. Now for a more complicated illusion, the masked magician will show you how the famous metamorphosis trick is done.
He begins by pounding on a wooden crate to prove that the sides are solid. Definitely a real crate. Right on cue, there comes the assistant. She is put inside a large red bag, which is tied tightly at the top, making it seem like she can't get out. Now the bag is placed into the crate. The lid is put on and fastened down with ropes. Sometimes magicians will use chains or locks. It doesn't matter. It's all an illusion. To prove that the crate is solid enough to support his weight, the magician stands on top of it. Then the curtain is raised and he gets inside. The curtain goes down and he begins to flirt with his assistants. The curtain goes up again. More diversionary tactics. The curtain goes up for the last time. And magically the magician is turned into one of his assistants. Remember, she was the one inside the bag. Now it's time to open the crate. The ropes are untied. And who do you think is inside the bag? You got it, the masked magician. How did he do it? Like we told you, this one's pretty complicated. To help you understand, here's a better look. We saw the assistant being placed into a large red bag, which was tied at the top. What you didn't realize is the bottom of the bag has a zipper. She's unzipping it right now. Once the assistant gets out of the bag, she reaches through a hole in the bottom of the crate and pulls on the rope to make it seem as if the lid is tightly secured. It really isn't. The extra slack will later allow her to slide the lid off the crate and make a quick escape. See? When the curtain goes up for the first time, the assistant climbs out and hides between the curtain and the crate while the magician puts one foot inside. The curtain goes up again, and in goes the other foot. As the curtain goes up for the third time, he quickly climbs inside and closes the lid as his assistant is revealed on top of the crate. The timing has to be just right in order to look like an instant metamorphosis. Our magician scrambles to get inside the bag while his assistants rush to untie the ropes. He doesn't have to worry about zipping up the bag since his feet are obscured from view. And that's how it's done. Coming up next, how to saw a woman in half and the secret behind making an elephant vanish right before your very eyes. We've all seen a magician saw a woman in half. Now we're going to show you how it's done. The first thing you need is a willing assistant. Of course, it has to seem like she's not willing. After all, who wants to be sawed in half? The assistant is shackled at the neck and ankles. This is to make it look like she can't move. Special boxes are then put in place and strapped to the table. The doors are open so we can see the assistant trapped inside. This is one of the things that makes this trick so effective. Finally, her hands are tied. She's not going anywhere. The doors are closed. Now, here comes the saw. This is a real saw. 
The blade is very sharp. But as you'll see later, that doesn't matter. The magician and his assistant make it appear as if they're sawing through her body. Sometimes this will be embellished by screams coming from the assistant inside the box. The saw is removed, but our magician isn't done yet. More blades are inserted through the center of the box. He makes it seem like he hit bone, but if this were really happening, the assistant would be dead. Now for the amazing part of the trick, the assistant is split in half and made dizzy just for good measure. Sometimes you'll see feet sticking out the other end of the box. These are fake feet that move by remote control. The boxes are put back together and the blades are pulled out. The straps are untied. The boxes are removed. And there she is, still shackled to the table. The shackles are unlocked, and from here, you can see that her stomach looks just fine. Now for the moment of truth. Here's how it's done. First, the assistant must appear to be completely immobilized. This is the key to the entire illusion. Check out the leg restraints. It's supposed to look like no one could get out of them. But watch. There's just enough room for her to slip free. It takes a really limber assistant to pull off a trick like this. Once the box is closed, she quickly gets out of her shackles and folds her body into the top half of the box, just in time to avoid the blade. This is actually pretty dangerous. The timing must be just right, because the assistant has no way to signal to the magician that she's clear of the saw. To enhance the illusion, the boxes are spun around while the assistant remains curled up inside the top half of the box. After the boxes are put back together, the assistant slips her feet back into the restraints, making it seem as if she's been locked in the entire time. The boxes are removed. The shackles are unlocked. And that's the trick. We told you it was simple. Now for one of Magic's most basic tricks, pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Nothing up his sleeve. The hat is empty. He tosses it into the air to show you that the rabbit isn't hidden inside. He unfolds the red scarf. This is merely a diversion. Watch closely. He reaches into his hat and, presto, little white bunny. Here's how it's done. First, a very small rabbit is carefully placed inside a specially designed black handkerchief. Don't worry, the rabbit is perfectly comfortable. There's no danger of being harmed. The handkerchief is then hung behind the magician's table. If you're wondering, the reason why magicians work with rabbits instead of cats or other small animals is that rabbits naturally sit still. When the magician picks up the hat, he also picks up the rabbit and puts it inside. Take another look in slow motion. The hat goes up and in goes the rabbit. Now watch again and see if you can spot when the rabbit is put inside the hat. Did you see it? The magician reaches inside the concealed handkerchief and releases the rabbit. And there you have it. Just that simple. You've probably seen the sword in the basket trick a thousand times. 
Now we're going to show you how it's done. Our assistant brings out the basket and gets ready to climb inside. The magician claps his hands to signal the beginning of the illusion. First, the assistant is covered with a black curtain. You'll find out why in a minute. The magician pushes the assistant down into the basket. The lid is put in place and the swords are brought out. They are not fakes. They are real swords and they are very sharp. He drives the swords all the way through the basket. It seems that they are cutting into our assistant. But if that were true, not even Fox would show you that. Notice the artistry. He makes it appear as if he's plunging the swords right into his assistant. It now seems that there are too many swords in the basket for anyone to survive. One by one, the magician removes the swords from the basket. No blood. That's always a good sign. Once the swords are removed, the magician covers the basket with a black curtain. Then he steps inside. This is to try to convince you that the basket is empty. If you're wondering what happened to our assistant, you're about to find out. The magician steps out of the basket and... What's this? Could it be... Yes, it's our lovely assistant, without a scratch on her. How did our assistant avoid becoming a human shish kebab? Actually, this is one of the easiest tricks. No smoke or mirrors required. First, while covered with the black curtain, our assistant makes it appear as if she's having a tough time fitting inside the basket. However, without the curtain, we can see that she's merely spreading her arms to create the illusion of size. There's actually plenty of room for her inside. Once she's in position, the lid is put in place. Back inside the basket, the assistant waits for the swords. Now for the blades. Remember, these swords are very sharp. With our mini camera, we can see that the assistant knows exactly where the swords are going and helps guide them safely through the basket. There's no room for error. One wrong move could result in serious injury. Now the final sword. Look how close it comes to stabbing our assistant. Once all the swords are put in place, the process is reversed and the swords are carefully removed. This is also very dangerous. Our assistant has to protect herself from the swords as they are pulled out of the basket. The magician covers the basket again. Then he steps inside, making it appear that it's empty. In reality, our assistant simply shifts her body to create enough room to accommodate our magician's feet and legs. Here's another look from our mini camera. See, there's plenty of room. The magician steps out of the basket. Now with the curtain back on, the assistant emerges from the basket and magically reappears, unharmed. So the next time you see this trick performed, you'll know how they did it. When we return, the incredible secret behind making an elephant disappear when magic's biggest secrets are finally revealed.
For his final trick, the masked magician will show you how to make an elephant disappear. There's always a lot of pomp and circumstance in building up the excitement for these big tricks. And they don't get any bigger than this. In case you're wondering, that's a real elephant. He weighs 7,000 pounds and stands 9 feet tall. His handlers are there to make sure he doesn't get out of control. It's important to remember that when you're working with wild animals, there's always an element of real danger. The assistants lead the elephant toward the magician. It's going to take a lot of magic to make this big guy disappear. The elephant is slowly moved into position behind the gates of the cage. Again, the assistants do a little dance. The masked magician gives the signal, and with the elephant inside, the gates of the cage are closed. Keep your eye on the elephant. You can clearly see that he's still in the cage. puff of smoke and the elephant is gone but while all this is happening the elephant never moves see he's still in the cage that deserves another look first the elephant is there then he's not have you figured it out well here's how the trick is done see the knitting at the back of the cage it looks exactly the same as the netting to the left and to the right of the cage. When the cage is closed, you can clearly see the elephant, as well as the netting behind him. Here's what you don't see. There are mirrors hidden inside each of the bars of the cage. When the magician triggers the explosives, the mirrors slide into place, locking your view into the cage. You are no longer seeing the elephant and netting inside the cage. Instead, you're seeing a reflection of the netting outside the cage. Meanwhile, the elephant hasn't moved an inch. You can plainly see that he's still in the cage. Let's watch that again. The elephant is inside the cage. When the smoke clears, you're seeing a mirror image of the netting outside the cage. This makes it appear as if the elephant has vanished. Behind the scenes, split-second timing is critical to making the illusion work. On cue, a stagehand pulls a lever that moves the mirrors into place. Here's the trick without the smoke. You can clearly see the elephant disappear as the mirrors shift into position. Now it's time to make the illusion complete. While the audience is mesmerized watching the elephant disappear, his handlers quickly take him out through the netting in the back of the cage. Now when the magician opens the gates, the elephant is really gone. Smoke and mirrors are also used to make other big things disappear. But no matter how large the object, the basic trick remains the same. Breaking the magician's code, magic's biggest secrets, finally revealed, will return in a moment. Now that we've shattered some of magic's greatest illusions, hopefully this will encourage magicians everywhere to come up with bigger and even more impressive tricks. And who knows, maybe someday we'll show you how those tricks are done too. I'm Mitch Pileggi. Good night. <laughs>